Okay guys, off to another rebuild. So, what we have in front of us today is the Force, or FC-28, 28R. So, it's the exact same engine as the HPI F4.6. Identical, other than just the block is basically different. So, let's uh, tear into this guy here. We got a brand new piston and sleeve kit with the connecting rod. That is that part number. And we got, that's the part number for the rear bearing. And the front is a 6072RS, 2-RS. RS. Right, enough jaw in here, let's get on with it here. Friggin Actually, you know what, fuck it. I'm gonna save you guys the racket here, or the bullshit to watch me uh, take out screws. Okay, slide head off, head button, make sure you don't lose your head shims, which this engine has two, or there might even be three, so there's two there, yeah, I think there's only two. One way bearing off, okay, so here's an important thing with force engines, so when you take the back plate off, there's a little starter, a little starter pin in there, you see it? So you don't want to lose that, so you want to grab that guy out with a pair of pliers. It just sits there. Don't lose it. And then you're going to want to get yourself a pick, like that one. And go down inside there, because there's a little spring right here. You don't want to lose that either, because that is what engages your starter pin. Right. Let's see here. If we can get that piston and sleeve out with... Oh man, I'm so disorganized today. Hang on a sec, I'll be right with you. Well, I guess I didn't need it. The sleeve is loose enough in the block. I stuck my finger in there and just pulled on it. There's sleeve and piston next. And the crank. There we go. Now we're just left with our bearings. The carburetor's already loose. Pop that guy off. Throw it to the side. We're gonna take this guy here and we're gonna use a brass brush and some super clean. We're gonna clean that up because why the fuck would you put a dirty, rusty crank back in there? It doesn't make any sense. Oh, ew, sticker's peeling off. I'll glue that back on later. All right, so what do we got here? We need some Need a little bit of propane, propane here, and of course, being in a house full of stoners, there's not a fucking lighter left absolutely anywhere. At least one that works. So we're gonna be stuck with some matches. Ugh. Let's see if I burn down my kitchen again. Luckily, I found some strike anywhere matches, but no box. So sandpaper. the smell of matches in the afternoon. So we're just going to warm this guy up and that'll expand the cases. Ouch, fuck that, that was hot. Away from the, expand the case away from the bearings. I should go get myself an oven mitt. Pro tip, dollar store oven mitts. They work. Neighbors are doing weird shit all the time. One guy watches and he goes, hur, 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 like this all the time, like Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> it's kind of comical, actually. He's uh, an interesting fella, to say the least. All right, let's see if that was hot enough. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, shit. <laughs> and the torch the other way, dumbass. All right, there we go. Uh, pliers. So these bearings won't, or at least the rear one doesn't want to fall out on its own. You have to kind of line it up. Like, it's kind of hard to show it here, but you have to kind of finagle with it a little bit to 
line it up to get it to want to come out of the case. A lot of people have had to go, oh, I can't get the rear bearing out. Well, you can, it's just kind of a little bit awkward to get them out. You have to get them just right. Ah, I'll have to pause. Hold on. So, the rear bearing is like an interference fit with the case on these, and it's a real pain in the ass to get them out sometimes. And I've been working at this thing for about 10 minutes now, so I'll continue to do that off camera. Okay, so, that's the rear bearing. As you can see, it is a very tight fit with the rear of the case. It's just how they are in these force engines. So what you need to do is actually heat the block up a little bit more so it'll slip past, because if you look, it won't go back in. Right, you have to get it just dead nuts on, and this, it's like a slip fit super tight. So, um, if you are going to be rebuilding one of these, or a 4.6 HPI, or a Dynamite 28 RTR, just note that they are a pain in the ass to get the rear bearings out of. Just take your time, and everything will be okay. We're going to let that guy cool off, and we're going to get to some cleaning here. And all that other fun stuff. Be right back in a minute. Okay. So we're back over here again. Let's get the clean in here. So someone was asking me now I cool. I almost burnt myself again. <clears throat> Super clean. Be careful because this stuff will attack aluminum and remove anodizing. And it's really bad for your skin. So just uh eh, it squirts like the morning after. <laughs> anyway, so let's take a little bit of a brass brush there. Brass is obviously softer than steel. Here, this is for uh, paper towel boy because apparently uh, paper towels will just completely ruin the inside of your engine when you touch a steel crank with them. Oh, yeah, it's over now. Brass brush touched that crank. She's freaking finished now, boys. That's it. Total write off. Fucking stunned. I don't know where these people get their freaking information from. My daddy was a mechanic for 50 years. Well, that doesn't mean he knew, he knew what he was doing. You know what I mean? Like, holy crap, people, come on. They're getting retarded. Well, I guess you can't say that on the internet anymore. But, uh, probably gonna get my freaking video banned, but, uh, I'm offended. Well, go back to your freaking jerk off station and go watch something else then for a while. If you're offended, please go away. Don't give me any views. I don't want them. Don't even watch this. This has nothing to do with what you're interested in. You just like to complain because you have nothing else to do in your miserable shit life. Look, people. I find your channel offensive. I find it offensive that you even exist. You breathe the same air as me. Carry a plant around to replace the oxygen you waste. Fuck, what, were you lack of air at birth or what? Look, people. Ugh, barf. It's like a fart vomit. Not sure what that is, but it sounds disgusting anyway. <coughs> Rant over. So, next. You want to clean the inside of your crank? Oh, I'm going to freaking cut on my finger. You know it right away when you have super clean because the shit burns your cuts. Look at that. You don't want a dirty crank. Ever. Because a dirty crank is not a good thing. Especially after your uh, escapade with that freaking three dollar broad you found in the parking lot at Arby's at two o'clock in the morning. You definitely have a dirty crank then. So after that you want to take a bath and lice all, but okay, so there's a hole here, right there. Get yourself a pick or a pin. So make sure that's clear. You want to make sure that one's clear. And that one right... Where are we at here? Right there. Make sure that one's clear as well. You use yourself a little safety pin or whatever you got. A little piece of wire off a brass brush or bristle brush or whatever. And uh, I can't feel any of that with my thumbnail. You guys like my fingernails. I know you do. You bunch of sick weirdos. Some kind of fetish. But you can't feel... Any of that is just lightly tarnished from being ancient. Because this engine's probably, oh, if I had to guess, 20-something years old anyway. 
Again, where's my, there it is. I'm just gonna take a little bit of, a little bit of 3,000. A little dish soap on there. So if you can't wash those parts in water, I'm sure you can. They wash them in water and caustic after they finish machining them anyway. Just gonna, just a little bit here. I know it's hard for, to just freaking do this and film at the same time, but just a little bit. Just take off some of that heavy scale that's on there. Just a little bit, not much. You don't want to reduce the size, you just want to take off some of that shit that's on there. That's it. This paper is ancient. There we go. That's it. No more than that. Just a little bit to clean it up. That crank is like brand friggin' new. Absolutely perfect. Right. So everyone goes, well, what do I do now that the crank is soaked in water? Well, that's an easy solution. Good question. Is I don't have any WD 40 on hand. Um, but what you can do is take yourself a paper towel and take yourself some penetrating oil, whatever your favorite kind is, and just, you know, just give it a Give it a good squirt like that, and that'll just keep, uh, you know, blast all the water off of there, right? Because you don't want a watery crank. Well, maybe you do, I don't know. I mean, everyone's different, right? So, right, so we're going to take this crusty old block here, and we're going to give it a little, what the fuck is wrong with the end of this thing? Squirt like it has a case of VD for crying out loud. Is VD still a thing? Take that, take your little brush there, and just give her a good scrubbing. That's what I use my toothbrush every day. I'm gonna keep my smile sexy. Yeah, just do that, get all the fins, get on the top of the block here. Just give it a clean up here. Nothing crazy. Just a little bit better than it was. And then we're going to go with the inside here in a minute. Like I said, you should be wearing gloves when you're using super clean as nasty shit. I don't have any nitrile gloves left. Um, so I'm going bareback today. Obviously, as you can tell. Look at the inside of that. See all the varnish in there? I'm going to throw some super clean. Ugh. Get yourself an ear hole dildo and freaking just swirl that around in there a little bit. See all that shit? Nice and new. Nice and clean. An old toothbrush helps too if you got one of those laying around. And borrow your one for your wife or something like that. Just don't tell her what you did with it. It doesn't, like, you don't have to get off all the staining, but as long as you get the majority of it out of there and there's not, like, big chunky stuff. Someone says, oh, you should buy this new and that new and this new and that new. Well, this is just a basher engine, right? It's like the inside's all perfectly new and clean, you know what I mean? It's all good to go. But, you know, some people are just fucking absolutely anal about everything these days. Probably because they like too much anal. Literally butter. Oh yeah. So there goes the neighbor taking off again. There's Mr. Cool is what we call him because he just likes to sit in his Mustang and redline that shit right out of it at 2 o'clock in the morning for whatever reason. So, man, I wish I could be that cool. When you get in there, just clean the shit right out of her. Like I said, you got to be careful because Super Clean can discolor aluminum, right? Like if you see here, because I'm using warm water, it does turn a little bit dark. But like I said, you can take your brass brush and just clean it up and it comes right back. Or you can use an SLS pad. One or the other. Alright, I'm going to pause and continue to clean this. I'm sure you guys have had absolutely good enough of watching that by now. Okay, we're back again. Let's grab our nice oily crank. Yeah. These are the old bearings, by the way. So, 
like I mentioned, this bearing for this engine, well, most of them, the ball bearings face out like that when you look in the back of the block, not like that. Sorry, take our new bearings. Let's try to move some shit out of the way here. And we are going to take, because I got some open, there's some Husqvarna two-stroke oil. You don't have to use this, it's just what I have open, because um, I was doing some testing with it earlier, and uh, I'm planning on mixing up a batch for my, uh, for my weed whacker and stuff. So, and I got it for free. I like free. So we're going to take a rear bearing, and like I said, the ball side faces towards the back of the crank like that. Not that side. That side. I'm gonna take some oil. Of course now I can't get the fucking thing out of there. There we go. Slip that new bearing on. Here's our front. So we're gonna put the front on the wrong way around, like I mentioned. So the seal is gonna go on this way, and what we're gonna use is the crank to push that in to the front of the block. You guys will see later. I got some two stroke oil in there. And we're gonna throw this in the freezer for, oh, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Some people say you have to do it overnight, but the thing is it's such a small piece of steel, it can only get so cold. You can leave it in there for a week if you want. It's not gonna make any difference. So we're gonna go and freeze this right now. Quick tidbit. Okay, so we have the head button here and we're looking at glow plugs. So this is what was in there. This is an N4, whoever the hell makes these. We're just going to observe this for a minute for a protrusion test on video for you guys. So as you can see there, well, let's grab a pointer here because my big fat thumbs are in the way. If we look here, you can see there's the plug tightened down and how there's about three, well maybe two and a half threads showing there. You can see that. So that plug is too short for this engine. So it'll reduce the compression ratio. So an OS, else, or a OS number eight or something would be too short. Um, so what we're gonna do in that case is we have an OS LC3. We're gonna test that instead. Come on. Freaking Captain Butterfingers today. So we're gonna put our OS LC3 plug in there. And we're gonna observe this again. Now, you can see, that's a used plug, but yeah, you get the idea. Now you can see that that plug matches perfectly with the burn room. Before, the other one was too short. So this will actually be the correct plug. So an OS LC3 or OS LC4 in this engine. That'll also be the same as your F4.6. Or if you have uh, the Dynamite 28 RTR, that'll use um, an LC3 or LC4 plug as well. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. All right, let's get the show on the road here. A little profane there, freaking. Like I said, freaking typical every time stoners come over. No freaking lighters left anywhere in the house. Oh, yes, that worked. Ugh. Face full of sulfur fumes. Smelly. Anyway, I'm gonna take. And not burn my kitchen walls down because that's kind of annoying when that happens. Throw some two stroke oil in there where the rear bearing goes. And I can't remember who it was that was asking, Oh, if I send you all my engines, would you rebuild them? Well, I mean, I would, but the problem is if you're in the States, it's such a pain in the ass to ship back and forth in the United States, and it shouldn't be. Like, we're just American North, really. I mean, that's it. It's like, how, how fucking difficult does it have to be? Well, do you have a receipt for the item that you're trying to sell? Or uh, ship, rather? No. Well, can you prove what it is? Oh, for crying out loud. You people, man. Oh. Oh. oh I found a piece of shit. Look at that. Fuck, we don't do plastic pipes at the Bug 404. I don't know why the hell that was even here. That's a sin, anyway. Um. <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, no, I freaking went to ship some stuff there into the States, and it was just something real stupid. Uh, and they had an absolute fucking meltdown. You don't know what that is. Well, it's none of your fucking business what it is. You know, it's like, I don't have any freaking prior convictions. Well, 
it's not really a conviction. I got caught jumping across the border by accident on the old motocross bike a couple of years back. I got a ban to the States for a while, but that's about it. You know, nothing too bad, really. Um, there you go. You hear that oil start to fry. That's when you know it's hot enough. But, uh, yeah, no, they freaking gave me all sorts of racket, and they couldn't ship it, and they wouldn't do this, and they wouldn't do that, and I had to have some special app and receipts, and, oh, fuck that. Just absolutely stupid. Oh, I got the bearing stuck, damn it. There we go. Just put it in kind of cockeyed. It'll give that just a little bit more heat for that rear bearing, because I know these cases are so tight. Just a little bit, because the glove absorbs some heat too, right? Just a little bit. You'll go, well, why do you freeze the crank? Well, because the crank actually needs to shrink a little, and the bearings need to shrink a little, and just like that. And make sure you give the crank a bit of a tug forward. Oh, smooth like glass, just like butter. All right, now we're just going to let that cool by itself down to ambient temperature. But, uh, yeah, because metallurgy, when you heat it, it expands, and when you cool it, it shrinks, right? So that's what the idea here is to shrink one, expand the other, put them together, and then when they both cool at the same time, they'll become one. And then to get them apart, it's just the reverse of just heating and cooling. Okay, so another tip here quick, uh, the block is just hanging out in the fridge behind me, is there's the wrist pin clips here, right? It's just, just push on them ever so slightly, not with very much force, but just a little bit. Push that pin just a little bit in either direction, just to make sure, because sometimes, oh, do you hear that? Little click? That clip wasn't fully seated. And I went click and I felt it pop back in again. So just always check these, these retainer clips here to make sure they're always all the way in because sometimes at the factory they can screw up. And the thing is, the last you want is that to come out of there and uh, ugh, get that apart and that to happen. See that? Notice how there's no clip in there. You see that big scar right up the side of the piston? That's what happens when the clip comes out. So always double check your clips to make sure that's a captured piston, by the way. This one actually uses two clips. This one only uses one. This is an SH, but um, you guys get the idea. Just something I thought I would share. So um, quick on this so you guys can see that. That's why I put the white towel down here so it's just a little bit better uh, for lighting. As we got our new piston, our starter pin, we're just going to take some of that two-stroke oil. We're going to go right in that wrist pin boss area, whatever you want to call it, pin bore, right in there, because like I said, oops, where are we here, I'm trying to do two things at once, including looking at the camera, because in there is a very highly stressed area, right, there's a lot of, a lot of force that goes on in there, <laughs> force engine, a lot of force, and of course your bottom pin bore, you want to make sure that oil hole right here is nice and clear, you can take and run a pin through there even though it's new, just going to take and oil that lightly, I'm just going to take some oil, rub it on that piston. You don't have to like saturate it like I am. I'm just kind of overdoing it just because I know it annoys the shit out of everybody. So we're going to take a little bit of the oil left on our fingers, throw it on the outside of that sleeve. That'll just aid in it going into the block easier. You know, throw a little in there. Freaking look at that. It slips right in like you bought at dinner. Pretty nice. Freaking, like I said, these force engines are really good, really good stuff. So um, 28 RTR from Force, HPI F4.6 and the Dynamite 28 RTR are all the same engine, all different part numbers, but all interchangeable. Uh, not to be confused with the Dynamite Big Red because that is an SH product. That is different, nothing will fit, uh, except for the carburetors, but yeah, anyways. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're back, all right. So where the engines are slightly warm, like not hot enough to hurt you, but you know, warm, is when I like to put them back together. It just aids in things going back together easily. So we got our crank. Put a little fucking two smoke oil in there. Like so. 
the rear bearings already. Well, if I could throw a little bit more in there. Just down in there. I actually had a lovely chat message me and asked me if I'd use Klotz KL, KL198. And no, I have not. That's a light technoplate for RC engines as well. And apparently he has good luck with assembly and all sorts of other stuff. So, um, I have not tried it. Oh, Jesus, look at these stickers are coming right off. And all the goop behind there. Mmm, yummy. Gross. Yeah, I'll freaking take some JB weld and glue those back on. <clears throat> right, now, we're going to get our piston and sleeve in there. And we know that our piston, the, oops, long side, see there's a side with a cutout in it, right here, that side faces the front of the block, so the side that doesn't have the cutout faces the rear, very important, because if you put it together backwards, she ain't going to run or turn over. So, next, I grab our pliers. Grab our wrist, or what do you call it there, connecting rod. You're going to try to line it up like that. And then, sometimes they just drop right together. Just like that. Bam, done. Nice and easy. Our bottom dead center. Take our pre-oiled sleeve. There's a pin right here. There's a notch right there. Line those two up. Yeah. Make a tight fit in the block. Fucking hands are greasy, I can't fucking feel nothing. There we go. Sometimes around the lip of the block, they can be a little bit tight fit, so don't stress about that. Just got to give them a little wiggle. <clears throat> then we rotate the crank a little bit. We push on that piston, usually on the side. It takes a couple tries sometimes. Then eventually that'll line up and bam, there you go. All back together again. Nice and lovely. People go, oh, why is it all tight at the top like that? Oh no, something's wrong with it. Nothing's wrong. That's called pinch. It's a brand new piston and sleeve. The old one, the piston is right here. And it goes way out the top. <laughs> it shouldn't be able to do that. No, that shot completely toasted. You could have it pinched, but the pin bores are all wore out. And uh, yeah, no bueno. Okay, so now for a bit of a tricky part, we are going to put that starter spring and pin in there. Now, um, sometimes I like to use a little bit of this stuff, Ultra Slick Permatex, and put a little dab of it right in the crank pin. Just a little bit, not a whole lot, but stringy, gnarly stuff. It's pretty awesome. Right there, see that? And uh, you can't, you don't really want to put your whole engine together with it because it's so sticky. And it'll make it really hard to turn over. Next, I'm going to find my brain, wherever the fuck I left that thing. Fucking, well, there's the sparter spring. So I'm going to grab that. And carefully, I'm trying to do this the best I can here so you guys can see too. Let me rotate that crank up a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to get that starter spring right inside there, and that thick, sticky oil will hold it in place. Next, <clears throat> your, your tiny little starter pin here, you grab that, you want to go right in the same place, or at least try to. Hold the crank so it doesn't move. I'm trying not to get my hands in the way here, sorry if I did that. Anyway, so that way... You can see the starter pin sitting right in the connecting rod, right there. And that super heavy, sticky oil will hold it from falling out. <clears throat> because from here, what you want to do is hold the engine in this position, upright. Well, ass end first. Right? And then what you want to do is you want to grab... It doesn't matter with this one which position it goes in, because it'll lock as soon as it goes on. Just grab this guy here. That's already all clean. And make sure that O-ring's not damaged. The side where the cutout faces up. Just like so. And if you hold the crank, spin the starter shaft one way, it'll freeway here go click, 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 
right? And if you turn it the other way, it'll lock up and grab, grab the crank and try to turn the engine. All right, so we're gonna take our four back plate screws. I don't have a pull starter for this engine yet. I'm waiting for that. That's why it's not in the video. We're gonna take our two millimeter. We're gonna put these screws in really quick here just because I know how much you guys love it. You guys have probably already signed off by now, but it's not like some people's videos just absolutely boring as fuck. You know what I mean? You go crisscross fashion. Always go crisscross fashion on all engines, big or small, doesn't matter. Just like when you're changing the tires on a car, crisscross fa fashion. Oh, the allergies are just loving it today, man, I'm telling you. There we go. Like I said, if, I, if you turn it, you guys can't hear it, but you guys get the idea. But if I turn it, it's trying to lift the piston and sleeve, so we know we're good. Yeah, these force engines, like I said, they're a little bit different if you're not used to them. So I did notice, and sometimes these head shims get stuck together, there is three. So I'm going to leave one out because you can. And I'm going to go with two because I want a little bit more higher compression ratio. And because these engines are grossly over shimmed for user error, so you can get away with it. So I have ran actually one shim with 30% and it was absolutely fine. Uh, not to say that you should do that, but I have tried it for science. Next, yeah, ever so lovely purple cylinder head. This actually had a black cylinder head originally, oh, for fuck's sakes. I'm gonna take a little bit of our two stroke oil not much, just a little bit on the threads because you're going steel to aluminum. And try and get all this lined up here. Nice side facing forward. So you don't want to go filling bolt holes with oil because you can hydraulic them and actually crack casings and do all sorts of damage. So just keep that in mind. Just run this guy in until it grabs. You'll feel it when you tighten it, it'll want to lift up the corner of the cylinder head. When it does that, just back it off. This thing stands up like a drunk in a windstorm. And our next. And we go even. Like I said, if you crisscross tighten everything, you'll be fine. A lot of people, what they'll do is just run one screw right down, just torque the shit right out of it. I wonder why the cylinder head doesn't seal properly. Like I said, if you guys aren't sure, just run all three shims or just run two. Because um, what can happen is you can over compress the engine and you're running 30% because of its, it's, it's uh, the way its ignition timing works. You can have detonation if you have too much compression. And you can fuck your engine over pretty good. Click. 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 And uh, click. There we go. And take our carb. It's clean already. I'm just going to take a little bit of oil. Check your O-rings. Make sure they're not damaged or missing because you'll have air leaks. And don't go gooping your engine with silicone. It doesn't help anything. The fuel just eats it. It doesn't... Uh, it's not good for it. There's O-rings there for a reason. Like I said, a little oil in that crank down in there. We stick our carb on there. Or if you're in Aust Australia, carby. For all my fellow Australians that are watching. You guys are all awesome. And also, push your carburetor down with your thumb. Then tighten it up. That way you can ensure that O-ring uh, o is fully seated. And then there you have it. Oh, I'm going to get an exhaust condom on there. There. There is a now fully, well, except for that shitty looking sticker, rebuilt Force 28R engine. Just like that one. Pretty nice stuff.
Oh yeah, and uh, someone was asking me the other day where I get these caps, like on the carburetor here. And if you go to your automotive shops and you go into like um, um, the section where they have a little bits and pieces, kind of like a little electrical connections and things like that, they're called vacuum caps. So you can usually buy an assorted bag for, I don't know, three or four bucks. So if you guys are trying to find them and the hobby shop will sell these for five bucks each, you can buy a big bag of them for five bucks. So just keep that in mind. Anyways, guys. Again, here's the part number for that piston and sleeve. For a Force 28R. I have no idea what that says in Mandarin or Taiwanese or whatever language that is. But you guys get the idea. Anyways, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Happy Monday. And uh, keep on burning nitro out there. Later. Cheers.